Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial, and today we're chasing steam leaks. You might be asking me, uh, Ryan, what are you doing with a broom in the engine room? You can't sweep up grease. Or Ryan, don't you know how to hold a broom? No, not really. Uh, but for this, I do know how to use a broom. So, Battleship New Jersey operates at 600 PSI. She has eight boilers, like this one, that are using air and fuel to boil water into superheated steam. In our case, that steam ends up at about 850 degrees and at about 600 pounds of pressure per square inch. That's what we need to be able to turn the turbines to create electrical and propulsive power, keep the ship going. The issue is, uh, 600 PSI is a pretty high pressure. Uh, high enough that I'm told that if you walk into it, it could cut you in half. I think that's probably a little bit of an exaggeration, but it's designed to teach you a healthy respect for a steam plant like this one. And in that, it certainly does. Uh, what I'm more worried about is it's 850 degrees, and I prefer about 74 degrees personally. So. Battleship New Jersey was being operated over 40 years after she was first built. While the ship is built out of armor plating, uh, pipes and other internal plumbing fixtures and whatnot are standard, normal stuff. Um, obviously, with steam pipes, they are much thicker grade than uh, your normal drain pipes or whatever's in a sink, but uh, still, they're very, very old and they're wrapped in a significant amount of insulation, so you can't actually see if there's any corrosion or anything else going on there. Uh, and they're pretty consistently have fluids moving through them. So the, the chance to deteriorate over the ship's career certainly existed. Uh, and I guess before we go any further, I should mention, I don't know of any specific instances of this happening, uh, at least on this ship. However, I have heard from a number of people, a uh, number of enginemen that they all heard that this is what you're supposed to do in this situation. It seems to me like a little bit of an old wives' tale, but I've heard it so many times, I think it's worth repeating here. So, uh, something happens, one of these pipes gets just a pinhole leak in it. We've certainly had pipes with pinhole leaks on here before, it's nothing too uncommon. So, what do we do? There's a crew of sailors here in the engine room, and uh, your first indication that there's a leak might be a high-pitched whistling sound as that 600 psi steam goes through the hole. Realistically though, that's probably going so fast you won't even hear it. The, the human ear just can't comprehend. Uh, so really what you'll probably see is it blowing out and then tearing up insulation on the other side of the room, uh, or uh, you'll start to see condensation form as that steam cools down and turns back into boiler feed water. Uh, so, when you start to see dripping or hear whistling, uh, that may indicate a steam leak, and at that point, you just freeze where you are. It's like you're in a minefield, uh, or more accurately, one of those fields that has lasers everywhere you don't want to walk through. So, you, you freeze where you are, and you, you call out so that everybody else knows there's an issue. Fortunately, right here, I'm pretty close to the door, uh, so I can call out and uh, maybe somebody there on Broadway can come in. Uh, so all of us in the engine room are staying put. Somebody else comes in, opens the door, I'm like, hey, we got a steam leak. They go back, they get some people, and the broom. This is where the broom comes in. Uh, so how do you find a steam leak? Use one of these. So all of the pipes on the ship are Lego labeled. 600 pound auxiliary steam. So this is a steam pipe. So if I start passing my broom over it, and it's not being cut in half by the steam, this pipe isn't the one that's leaking. So I'm safe. I, I can now exit the space, get a broom, and come back and start searching myself. If I worked in an engine room, I think I'd carry a broom with me all the time. So one thing that helped the engineering department out in this task was as part of training for engineering, you had to be able to trace out every pipe and every valve from memory. 
tell what it was for. It's relatively easy when you're standing here and it's color coded and it's got labels on it, but with Chief glaring over you, taking an exam and trying to trace out the whole system, you've really got to get it memorized. And that means that when there's an issue like this, you, you can, off the top of your head, even in a low light situation, know, all right, auxiliary, steam, auxiliary, steam, don't need to swipe this, this is ventilating air, uh, don't, don't need to swipe this, this is water, but this is steam here. So, not just for the extremely rare and unlikely instance that you've got to literally sweep your pipes, but uh, any sort of maintenance that needs to go down. Also, uh, it helps you remember off the top of your head, oh, there's a valve right here, find the leak here, I can shut this valve, and now I've isolated it to the point that uh, we, we can start doing maintenance work. And eventually, we're, we're going to find the trouble spot, it's going to cut the bristles right off the broom, and uh, there it is. We've got to isolate the auxiliary steam line from boiler number three. Uh, so you shut that down. The ship does have eight boilers, so she can still run at a pretty decent speed with one shut down. Uh, these would often be shut down for maintenance, so, so it's no big deal there. You wait for it to cool down, you wait for the pressure to bleed off, and then you can start cutting at the insulation and find your leak. Piece of cake? So we were out steaming at flank, and all of a sudden, the two watermen up top said, Frank, we can't keep control of the water in our boilers. So I said, well, let's take the emergency pump and rotate back and forth, bring the glass all the way up, and then shove the pump off to the other guy and bring it down and back and forth. And finally, they said, we can't keep up. So I notified the, the engine room. I says, I'm having trouble maintaining water in a bi-boiler. I says, I don't know what I should reduce my boiler pressure. If I do that, you might lose your load. But uh, I, I'm just warning you that if the water disappears, I'm shutting the boilers down. Because if you don't, they'll blow. So I warned them again. I says, in about two minutes, I'm going to shut the plant down because the water's going out of sight. I says, so you've got to do what you've got to do. i got to do what i got to do. So, of course, the water went out of sight, and I shut the plant down, closed the main steam line, and, of course, the ship slowed down, and the sea trials was over. I got a call from the, from the captain down, and then asked me who I was, and this one, and asked me what happened. I told him what happened. Said, well, great job, guy. Great job. So this is a pretty universal thing across steam-powered ships. Uh, so with the number of steam-powered ships decreasing, maybe it's not something they teach in uh, damage control school anymore. But during New Jersey's time, when steamships ruled the waves, they might have all had different PSIs. Uh, some American warships had as much as uh, 1,200 PSI within New Jersey's lifetime. Other ones were down at uh, 200, 300, 400 PSI. All of that is more PSI than I want to stick my hand into. So this is a pretty common thing across ships of this type, not just battleships, but ships with this sort of propulsion plant. Did your ship have a steam plant, and were you ever told this sort of story? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, and also from a number of businesses and private donors like yourselves. In particular, the support you guys have given us in the last year and a half have allowed us to go from making one video a week to making multiple videos a week. Uh, and that's really helped us grow and helped us make this a larger part of our job here at the museum. So thank you for that. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue to support us. Uh, and another way to support us is to click the like, share, and subscribe buttons to let other people know that we're out here. Thanks for watching.